Welcome to Matt's Metalworking. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a nylon jack pad. The reason for making this jack pad is that I wanted something that wouldn't damage the pinch weld on my car. The jack uses a metal pad, which isn't great to lift the car on the pinch welds, and there is a high risk of deforming it. At the end of the video, I'll have a photo of the jack pad with all the dimensions for a reference. Removing the old jack pad, which is held in with a cotter pin that clips into a dowel in the center. It's nothing overly complicated, essentially I'll be copying the original base. However, the nylon insert will have a slot where the pinch weld fits into. For this I'm starting out with a piece of 3 inch diameter nylon. I'm not sure on the grade, I purchased this from a local metal supplier and this is what they had lying around. Delrin would also be another option, however nylon is stronger with a tensile strength rating of about 10,000 or higher PSI. Nylon is a form of plastic used in a variety of applications including industrial and can be found in bushings, wear pads, wheels, seals, etc. Nylon has a great wear resistance and is self-lubricating. The total height of the nylon insert will be 1.5 inches. This includes a dowel where the insert fits into the cup on the jack frame and above for the pinch weld height. This is fairly specific for the jack design and my car. Unfortunately, I don't have any parting bits that are able to go deep enough for the nylon, so I'm forced to cut this by hand. While nylon is a softer material, it isn't as easy to cut as I was expecting. Switching between a coarse tooth wood saw and a hacksaw blade, there was no quick method. The wood saw gave a wider cut, however the saw was binding. With the wider blade, I could go in after with a hacksaw blade, and it was thinner, and it made the cutting slightly easier. Cleaning up the ends, facing them on the lathe. Keep the lathe speed high, first roughing in the surface manually ensuring it's square. 20 thou cuts to start, running at 600 RPM. Make sure your tool bit is sharp, here I am using HSS. Nylon gets very stringy especially when making heavy cuts. A chip breaker doesn't work here, so the only real way of breaking the strand is by stopping your feed. I don't recommend breaking it by hand while the machine is on as you may hurt yourself. As a final cut, I did set up the power cross feed at a lower rate at about 2 thou. And the last cut was 5 thou, which achieves a smooth finish. This can be one solid cut. The strand will be very hair-like, thin and breaks away very easily, so it shouldn't create too much of an issue. I'm not using any cutting fluid either for this. Once done, both sides have been faced so they're smooth and the part is the correct length. Putting the part back into the chuck, just to be safe I set up a dial indicator to check for any run out and made adjustments as needed. While the jaws are snugged up, using a mini dead blow hammer, this part is tapped into place so it does run true. This is tough with nylon as it is a soft material, made to form when being clamped and can move with heat. Next is cutting the dowel, first roughing it in just like before. With the nylon's lubricating qualities, even with the jaws tight, when taking heavier cuts, it does have a tendency to slip in the jaws, so be mindful of that. Once the dowel has been cut, here's a close-up of the finished surface. The dowel is only used to hold the jack pad into place. It won't have a cotter pin, just like the previous metal pad. Turning down the nylon slightly to clean up the outside. The overall diameter isn't overly critical, however it will be a larger diameter than the recessed area where it fits into the metal cup. When turning apart on the lathe, your cuts will be doubled as the perimeter material is being removed. So if you're moving your cross slide by 5 thou, that means a total of 10 thou of material is removed. Therefore, if you start out with a 3 inch diameter, the part is now 2.990 thou. Flipping the part over, now cutting the correct diameter so the pad fits into the cup on the jack. There is a radius on the inside edge of that cup, so it does need to be matched. The tool slide is rotated to the appropriate angle, and this will need to be changed a couple times to achieve a rough radius. After those angles were shaped into a rough radius, use a file to finish them up. And then finally clean everything up with 320 grit sandpaper. Now for the slot. I installed my vertical milling attachment for the lathe. The part will be mounted in this and an end mill will be used in the spindle. The squareness of the milling attachment was checked using a dial indicator and adjustments were made as needed. The part is then clamped into place and just to be safe I did verify its position with the dial indicator again. 
The vertical position of the part was determined by using a center drill in the chuck. This was just done by eye. While I should be using a collet on the spindle, unfortunately I don't have any collet specific for this lathe. Making a custom collet holder is certainly on the DIY list, and I will have a video for that in the future. Using a 3 8 end mill in the chuck, the slot was then cut. First it was roughed in to the appropriate depth, then a 5 thou cut was the final finish. Same speed as before, 600 RPM, and a 2 thou feed rate. Here's the pad once that slot is cut. With the milling bit, the edges did leave some burrs and this can be easily cleaned up using a razor blade. Once done, here's my pad. After this footage was shot, I have been using this pad quite a bit and it's cheap insurance so my rocker panel doesn't get damaged. I don't have to worry about chipping off the paint as the nylon is soft enough to protect it. If the nylon pad ever gets damaged, I can always make another one and it's much cheaper than having to repair a rocker panel. The lip does sit on the nylon and not the metal cup's edge. The sides of the slot help support the flange so it doesn't become deformed and the bottom of the slot is a lifting surface. The top of the nylon pad does have clearance at the bottom of the rocker panel and floor. This concludes the rest of my video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave a comment below and throw a like my way. Don't forget to subscribe to my metalworking channel for more videos. Thank you for watching.